Hello, my name is Mage, and welcome to Black and White Thinking. This video is going to be my thoughts and feelings on the Harley Quinn show, the Harley Quinn animated series, episodes one to three, season three, the premiere we just got. If that's your kind of thing, please join me. And if you like this content, please consider subbing to the channel. It really, really helps. Thanks. So yay, we did it guys. We made it to season three. This two year gap has not helped in any way in regards to how I've processed this show. This isn't something I've written down, this is just something that's popped into my head as I start speaking. Anyway, hi, I'm Mage. Here are some feelings about Harley Quinn. I'm gonna go through vaguely chronologically because that's the way I made my notes. As I rewatched the episodes, there'll be a little bit of jumping back and forth because there are always is with me. And yeah, let me get on with it. And phew, okay, not great that the first scene of the season was probably like one of my least favourite scenes of the three episodes that we got. I am not going to reiterate things that I have already mentioned on this channel multiple times. Porn isn't a joke. I won't bore everyone with a bunch of feminism they didn't ask for, but I will point out that about a year ago we heard news of this sexy opening scene and the writers very much implied that it would be Harley and Ivy in that scene, and like it was, and I know they think they're funny and clever, but please just give me a Harley and Ivy sex scene that isn't either in porn or in revenge porn, please. One that involves Harley and Ivy, the characters, consent, anyway. So yeah, we open in the Fortress of Solitude. All good, love this, even the cringy ship name stuff. I don't know why, I, I absolutely hate it when ship names are brought into, like, canon. Like, there's such a fandom trope. And when shows go all meta like that, to be fair to Harley Quinn, it kind of, it works because this show is meta and it's like batshit, right? But there have been some terrible times that ship names or fandom concepts have been referenced in shows that just make me cringe. And this just triggered me because every time I hear a ship name in a show, I think about the fact they made OTP hats for the Britney and Santana wedding in Glee. What a time. Although Hy-Vee really made me laugh. Their ship name should be Hyvie, like, that's canon now, we're doing that. Also, just generally, I made this note like four times, Lake Bell is killing it this season. I mean, she kills it every season, but she really, like, Chef's Kiss has taken it up a notch, I think. She's just, like, the heart of the show, and she's so good and underrated, and I'm glad she's here. I really like this naked money shot we get. It's the very definition of be gay, do crime. I love it. Gordo stuff is whatever. Same sort of stuff I talked about when we were reviewing the comics. He's a very specific Jim Gordon. It does make me laugh though because he's voiced by Chris Maloney and if you know one thing about me it's that I fucking hate Elliot Stapler and this version of Jim Gordon is that that's how I see Elliot Stapler. That is Elliot Stapler to me. SVU reference because I'm showing my age. Another thing I'm going to reiterate, Harley has BPD. Especially this version of Harley, it really fascinates me how exaggerated some of her traits are in this show. Counting the days, being upset at the most mild rejection, needing validation from literally everyone. Mood. We got an Eden reference, which if you go watch my Poison Ivy video that I posted a few weeks ago, you'll hear a little bit about that in that, and even more in part two, which is coming soon, hopefully. Eden is a concept from the comics. Eden is used differently by different writers, but essentially it's this Eden, obviously, that Ivy creates, sometimes to keep herself safe, sometimes to hide, sometimes to kill humans, sometimes to save kids. It really depends, but it is integral to her character, so it's a nice shout out, even if I'm not sure where this storyline is going, because it's really nice that Harley is like, hey, we're going to do this thing together that you care about, but I know for a fact she's going to change her mind in like an episode. So we'll circle back to that at the end, because I have a lot I need to talk about in regards to some recent spoilers I read. So yeah, if you're into like really spoilery end of season stuff, we'll get to that at the end. I'll, I'm gonna leave this for now, but we'll get back to it. But yeah, it is nice seeing them both be supportive and open with each other. Them communicating really is the most important thing. Even when they've had ups and downs in these episodes, they've been pretty open with each other. They've dealt with it in the moment. I mean, they spent like three episodes last season not even talking to each other. So progress, progress. These two are good for each other, and this kind of dialogue here, the plot is whatever. It's not my favourite thing in the world. I talked about that in the season three trailer video, but the chemistry, the tone, the way they talk to each other here, this this is what I want. This is my, you know, kind of Harley and Ivy. Also, Ivy get therapy and not from Harley this time. James Gunn shows up, feels like he's going to be here for the whole season, or at least a good part of it. I don't care and I'm not really going to talk about it. Plastique was kind of funny. Love a Canadian joke, eh? 
and specifically that I didn't think Canada made terrorists thing. I don't know why that made me laugh so much. The middle finger from Walla also made me laugh. Child's humour. But yeah, more importantly, I really enjoyed kind of starting to see boundaries being set and Harley and Ivy being open and honest about the first couple of weeks of their relationship and what that looks like. I just love seeing them work together to blow shit up, kill some bitches, etc. It's just what they're best at and they're best at it together. I think Harley summed it up best when she said, Partners in crime in every sense of the word. I love that. Thanks for that quote. Keeping that. And it's nice to see them kind of get these stereotypical sitcom endings where they just like kiss and make up. I hope it's not all that. It will play with the integrity of the actual plot, but it is nice to see every now and then. I like just simple gay shit and we deserve simple gay shit. Fuck, Honey and Ivy deserve some simple gay shit. The episode ends fine. It felt very quick, simple, brought us back to Gotham. Season two does that physically and actually opens with us coming back to Gotham with Harley and Ivy. And also Dick Returns, played by Harvey Guillen. I don't know if anyone's seen What We Do in the Shadows this season, season four, but Albie Guillen can kick some ass, and it would be so great if they cast him as Nightwing in real life, but they won't because they're cowards. But for real, he could do it in real life, and I support the Albie Guillen as Nightwing campaign, but like, live action. I enjoyed seeing them reunite with the boys properly, Shark and Clay and Frank. I love how supportive Shark Face are of Harley and Ivy. I love that Harley called them Shark Face. I don't know why that made me laugh. That's the only acceptable ship name that's allowed to be used in the show. I love Harley's hype train for Ivy this entire episode, juxtaposed to Ivy's increasing anxiety. Both are relatable, I've been both of those people. And like, they're just finding their footing, right? There's something a little cringy about how they move around each other at the moment. Like two 13 year olds you've never dated before, and I kind of love it. It's a whole take on its own, but it's interesting. Also, paleobotany is like super cool. It's like one of the coolest things in the world. Ivy's always been right about that. We get to see Bane and again, I hope he joins the gang at some point. That would be nice. He's depressed. They can share the pasta maker. Everyone wins. But yeah, the biggest takeaways from the second episode were Nightwing's introduction, which eh, Harvey Guillen is doing really good. Don't get me wrong, I just said that. And I did really like Dick's first scene on the bus, but there is some minor out of character going on here for comedy's sake, which whatever. Again, it's a comedy. Other big takes are that Holly remains super obsessive and she needs to learn when to give Ivy some space. But I think she's learning too, and I think that will be like a thing. I'm not too worried about it. And the third thread was Ivy's character moment. There was a progression here of her accepting the crew a bit more, of being more honest with Harley about her actual feelings, and also just kind of acknowledging the idea that she needs to be a bit kinder to herself, which I have spoken about in multiple videos at this point. Yeah, Ivy's self-confidence is like through the floor at the moment. She hates herself and it affects her relationships and everything in her life. So like Harley, you know, hype training her is in par with what I expect in reaction to that. Episode two was fine overall. Again, you saw a lot of the Bat family. I didn't actually write down much about that. I don't know why. I was probably just too busy watching it again. Great, 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 great. I'm gonna die with the eighth Robin. I'm the first! This whole thing with Ivy's self-esteem and Harley talking about how she will love her even when she isn't perfect reminds me of a Richard Sykin quote from a poem called Snow and Dirty Rain, which I'm going to bore you all with now because I love poetry, especially poetry by Richard Sykin. He's easily one of my top three poets and you should read him if you haven't. We have not touched the stars, nor are we forgiven, which brings us back to the hero's shoulders and the gentleness that comes not from the absence of violence, but despite the abundance of it. There is a point where sometimes the only way to heal true hurt is kindness, and maybe not kindness to the people that hurt you, but kindness to yourself. Forgiveness goes a long way. Forgiveness to yourself. Again, never to the people that hurt you unless you want to. But Ivy is not very self-forgiving, and I think that will be a through line here for the rest of the season. Or at least I hope it will. And it isn't just left as a hanging thread like this Frank thing seems to be. I'm assuming this is just a way to give Frank new powers and we're going to address it like later in the season and he just has powers now. But it was really weird that after this I am a god scene they just like cut and didn't address it again. <laughs> we just have to like wait because there was a whole episode afterwards where they didn't even like anyway 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 anyway. Episode three. So Ivy blows up the mall that they were staying in, the one that Sky gave them. So they end up going to Selena's and that's where Episode 3 starts. I'm not a huge fan of how Selena and Ivy's friendship is betrayed in this show, but I do think this is a subtle sign that this Selena does like this Ivy, letting them stay. This is clearly a sign that 
she does care about their friendship in some way. I mean, letting all of them stay, that's it's quite something for this particularly cold version of Catwoman we have. Famous Cunnilingus scene that was cut. I don't really have any more to say about that. It is what it is. I am enjoying seeing Ivy use pet names because I am a shipper at heart and fuck it, why not? It's always reminiscent of original Harley and Ivy and it's a nice shout out. It's carried through the comics and the animated stuff and I love it. I also love Ivy's support for Harley in this episode, even though she is anxious. We've seen that anxiety build over the last few episodes. She still steps out of herself and goes and tries and she has to step out for a moment, but she still comes back and is there at the awards for Harley. As I said earlier with the scene in the first episode, this is them at their best here. This is the stuff I want from all versions of Harley and Ivy, this kind of camaraderie that they seem to find even when they are on completely different pages. And look, even the Villies agree that Harley and Ivy are Gotham's best ship, so. Riddler and Clock King. Riddler being gay is good. Him being nice is terrifying, chilling, awful, but in a good way. And I kind of like this Clock King thing. Yeah, that was hard to say. It would be a shame to just throw it away. I hope they don't. I hope they kind of keep it going and see where this leads Riddler as a character because this clearly wasn't planned, but it could be really interesting. Why not? Also more gay characters. There needs to be more queer characters in this show. That was one of the things I really liked about Eat Man Kill was it was just gay on every page because T is gay and why not? Queer, gay, LGBT, a little bit fruity, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Billy Bob Thornton looks like Bob Odenkirk in Better Call Saul. It's horrifying and no offence to Billy Bob Thornton, but also full offence to you, Billy Bob, because I don't really care. Team Angie, always. Billy Bob Thornton does not look this young. This animation is being way too kind to him. That's a mean thing to say, but also I genuinely did not recognise him. But I recognised his voice, so it was really weird. I thought Billy Bob was playing a character who was an actor, but he's actually playing Billy Bob, which maybe draw him like Billy Bob next time so I can fucking recognise him. Anyway, what Joker do? Tudic is once again brilliant. Man can't do anything wrong in terms of performance. This kind of felt like some offshoot of the Rick dance, and I'm, uh, I say that as someone who is not a fan of Rick and Morty. It's obviously not as bad as the Rick dance. Could anything be? But Ivy said it best, you know? This is beyond messed up. Uh, let's talk about the giant kite in the room. He was fine, I guess. We all know what I think. I think this whole Chuck was a good man narrative is forced at best, and they basically admit that when they talk about how he was a himbo at the start. But he became good. I'm just telling on themselves at that point. But I'm glad this is resolved. The less Chuck, the better. And Golden Glider is cute. I liked listening to Ivy kind of talk openly to her in this kind of Harley-esque way. It was nice. I didn't need the kite man to happen for this conversation to be interesting. These costumes, sick as fuck. Harley and Ivy look fine. They both look so good dressed up like this. This leaving scene, minus Harley's arse, which, ignore that, is a reference, really clear reference to the Batman animated series and Harley and Ivy, that episode. I'll play it on screen. They leave together arm in arm. In Memoriam was funny. Even funnier when you realise that they are all casualties of Harley. And I am always happy to see Black Manta and just generally the rest of the background villains. It's cool. The Villies episode was particularly metaphorical, a tad random in places otherwise, but I liked most of it. It definitely wasn't bad. None of these episodes are bad. None of them were my favourite episodes of Harley Quinn ever. I'd have to probably do a fair amount to beat that, to be honest, because not a lot is going to be all the best inmates have daddy issues for me. That was just a peak episode of television. But yeah, those are some bullet points I made. Let's move on and just talk about, like, my overall feelings and then you guys can tell me all yours in the comments or join the discord because we talk about Harley Quinn a lot and there's a spoiler chat specifically for season three so if you want to come talk to other people about the show join in the discord you don't have to talk about anything else you can just come talk about Harley side note a lot of people join the discord and they're like oh my god there are so many channels and they don't know what to do you don't have to interact with all of the channels guys you can just interact with whatever you want I mean it's my discord and I say like three words a day all right, let's do this. Final thoughts. So at the risk of looking like a sycophant, I liked it, mostly. It feels too early to judge, kind of. It still feels a bit episodic 
And I think the next few episodes are going to be really important in terms of how the rest of the season plays out. I did enjoy these first few episodes, even if I am worried about some abstract things that, again, I'm going to talk about last so that everyone can avoid spoilers if they want. I am enjoying watching Holly and Ivy communicate and set boundaries. It is so early in their relationship, like, it's an important time to do it. There is a sense that the show almost feels like it's having to reset itself after season two. There's kind of this pre-Harley and Ivy, post-Harley and Ivy world, and so much of the tension Therefore, the plot of season one and two was kind of built up out of this Harley and Ivy relationship. Not just the will they, won't they of season two, but also the when will they realise of season one. So it feels like there are kind of new seeds, pun intended, to be laid out, not just across the season, but also across any potential rest of the show. And on the backside of that, a lot rides on this season, and especially, like I just said, the next couple of episodes. We only have ten episodes, and... With three in, which means these four in the middle are going to be really, really important for the bulk of the plot. We should see the main plot kind of come together over the next episode, I'd assume, and see some kind of tying together of A plots and B plots. Which brings us on to some spoilers I need to talk about. So, seriously, listen to me. (laughs) If you do not want to be spoiled for the end of this season, stop watching this video right now because, like, I'm going to spoil it. And I'm going to spoil it because they spoil it because they're idiots and DC doesn't know how to deal with press releases. So, five second warning. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so for those that don't know, T. Franklin is doing another comic, this time with some of the writers from the show, and it's going to tell not just Harley and Ivy stories, but a bunch of like side character stories. And this comic is going to come out after season three. DC released the plot synopsis for it, and yeah. <laughs> I spoke in the season three trailer about how I feel about Harley being a hero and Ivy being a villain. I think it's um, stupid. And I'm not going to go into all of the why I think that now, but I am going to spoil the show and say that this comic basically revealed that by the end of the season, Ivy is going to be the head of the Legion of Doom, you know, that club of dicks that she doesn't care about, and that Harley is going to be a member of the Bat family, which again, also mentioned this in my season three trailer video about how comic adjacent this season feels, which fuck off DC. Stop trying to control every Harley and Ivy narrative to create something that just fucking isn't there. The last couple of years have just been DC trying to reframe Harley and Ivy for the sake of their specific takes on women. And I hate it. I hate it. I'm sorry, I just hate it. This does not mean that I think that Harley is a villain or that Ivy is a hero or anything like that. Like, it's way more complicated than that and I'm gonna make a video about it because Jesus Christ, I just need to talk about it at this point. Get my feelings off my chest. I really don't like anyone being labelled as a hero or villain. It's Gotham. It's not how things work, but whatever. My friend, Unforgiving Underling, whose YouTube I'm gonna link below and you should go check it out because he also makes Harley Quinn content. We talk a lot in Discord about this and he was saying that the show is starting to feel a little bit less surprising. And I agree. I completely agree. Probably for a few reasons the show feels that way. It's in its third season. There's only so many times you can make a joke about Shark or Joker or Batman. But also this predictability kind of comes alongside any Harley and Ivy story these days because DC are so restrictive in how they let Harley and Ivy be used when they are together. And it doesn't surprise me that in order for DC to have allowed them to be in a relationship in this show, they have to make such a moral point about how Ivy is a villain and Harley isn't. This isn't just about the show. This is a long, complicated issue I have with DC. I've had to cut so much swearing out of this video. I'm so sorry. But it is worth noting that this is happening. Like, I would just prefer Harley and Ivy to be villains together as they were written. Not that DC don't pay attention to their own content, but Harley was not some fragile wallflower who was just manipulated by the Joker. Like, there is way more there, agency there, than she is given credit for. And there is not some alternative reality where if Harley hadn't met the Joker, she would be a superhero. She's not that kind of girl. She almost had me, you know. Arms and legs chained, dizzy from the blood rushing to my head. I had no way out other than convincing her to call you. I knew your massive ego would never allow anyone else the honor of killing me. Though I have to admit she came a lot closer than you ever did. 
And like people can argue with me about that all they like, but that's where I'm at. And again, the same with Ivy. With Ivy, it's complicated as well because like Ivy has twice the history and twice the kind of social issues that come with history behind her. She's 70 years old compared to Harley's 30. So addressing her place in the villain spectrum is harder to do. Again, I talk about this all in my Poison Ivy video. I've made so many videos about Poison Ivy and Harvey Quinn at this point. I don't know how you guys part up with me. I'm just rambling at this point. Go check out Underling's channel. He's made, again, videos about Harley Quinn and he's really cool, if not mildly obsessed with Rick Astley. Yeah, I'm going to forget that I completely just went off a tangent then and I'm just going to wrap up what we've got. These were some feelings about Harley Quinn, season three, episode one, two, and three, and Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn in general because I start talking about them and I can't stop, apparently. If you enjoy rambles like this, then please consider subscribing to this account. My name is Mage, and this has been Black and White Thinking.